Let me tell you a thing while I'm sharing my screen. This is minimum string I've linked after removing substrings. Okay. So I apologize to my followers who have been asking where I've been these last couple days, maybe these last couple weeks. Um, I've been preoccupied, busy, totally engaged and involved in my work and Unfortunately, as a consequence of that, I've been unable to upload a video. Um, I apologize, sincerely. And I hope that uh, going forward, I'll have more time to make these videos because I really do appreciate it. It's good for me. It's good for people that have an opportunity to watch them, maybe. And uh, it's generally just fun. So with that, let's go ahead and just do an easy to, you know, slowly reintegrate myself into solving daily lead code problem challenges. ETC period. Okay, so you're given a string S consisting only of uppercase English letters. Okay, so it's pretty constrained, right? It's a string S and each character in S is just one of those 26 uppercase English letters. You can apply some operations to the string where in one operation you can remove any occurrences of one of the substrings A, B, or C, D from S. So what does that mean? Well, you know, if you have S equals, you know, I don't know, some stuff like X, Y, Z, A, B, X, Y, Z. Well, just so happens that if there's an A, B, you can remove that, right? And you're going to want to return the minimum possible length of the resulting string that you can obtain. So that's kind of an interesting way of stating it, right? Because it's saying the minimum possible length as if there might be some sort of, I don't know, ideal or ideal, optimal approach of removing substrings, right? You know, maybe you have A, B, and C, D. Is it better to move the A, B than move the C, D? Or do you move the C, D first, maybe, right? So it kind of seems like there might be multiple ways. I don't know. That's the impression we get from reading this, right? We want to return the minimum possible length of the resulting string you can obtain. So maybe there's some mechanism in which we delete strings and it's not the minimum right we want to return the minimum way okay now note that the string concatenates after removing the substrings and can produce new a b or c d substrings so when i delete this a b the resulting string is x y z the a b are now gone and it's just another x y z right so i've removed these a b so it's x y z x y z x y z x y z okay now, what it's saying about this produce a new AB, well, what's interesting about this, right, is if we had, for example, S equals X, A, C, D, B, X, you know, random example. Well, we can only delete CDs or ABs. Now, we don't see any ABs here, but very quickly you'll see, well, once I delete this CD, well, wouldn't you look at that? Now there's an AB because I've removed the CD from the system. So then these ABs are now together and I could say, well, whoa, I can delete another AB and now I have XX. Right. And that I can't delete, right? The only thing I can delete are A's, B's, C's, and D's. All right. So many people are going to very quickly know what to do in this case. And it might seem unintuitive if you haven't practiced or haven't done similar problems in the past, right? This is definitely one of those problems where the intuition isn't always clear. It usually isn't clear to most of us, you know, mortals. But if we have solved problems that are very similar, the solution becomes quite self-evident, right? It becomes quite evident, it becomes quite clear, it becomes quite transparent. Okay, this is the direction we're gonna go. And this is definitely one of those problems, right? I almost instantly, when I looked at this, I realized what the optimal solution was because I have you know, done problems that are very, very similar, and there's a whole class of problems that are similar to this, okay? But what's interesting about this problem as well is, well, it, it might be an easy for that reason, right? I don't understand the minds of the people that classify these problems. It might be labeled an easy because the solution is so common to many problems, or it might be labeled an easy because, well, you look at the constraints of S, what's well, only less than 100, right? So that means, you know, N, if we think about big O notation, N is less than or equal to 100, so that's N squared, or 10 squared. So we could have anything, you know, we could do 10 squared, 10 to the fourth, 10 cubed. So we could probably do an N cubed solution that would meet these constraints, right? And 
An n cubed solution would be 10 to the 6 in this example, and that probably wouldn't give us a time limit exceeded. So this might be an easy problem just because it has such leniency in terms of what it allows us to do, right? We're allowed to do an n cubed solution, which in most contexts would be, you know, horrid, it would be unacceptable. But since our s is so small, we can afford to have such an inefficient kind of brute force solution. So what would be that n cubed brute force solution? Well, you know, what we can do is since, you know, sometimes it's not always clear, right? We can't in one pass, at least in this approach, we can't in one pass know exactly how many things we're going to be able to delete, right? Because in one pass, we delete CD, but only after we delete CD do we discover that, oh, there's an AB that can also be deleted, right? So we have to pass again and again because every time we pass, we might discover, oh, look at this. There's new things that can be deleted, right? At this first pass, all I thought was CD could be deleted. But only on the second pass, after I deleted CD, did I recognize, realize, oh, there's an AB that could be deleted too. So I have to go through, go through, go through, go through, right? And that can be an N cubed or an N squared solution. I'm not going to spend too much time focusing on that because there's a faster solution. So, you know, in most interview contexts, it's, it's, it's sufficient to just say, look, there's this N cubed solution, which is brute force. It could be N squared if you use like a linked list representation where you delete characters, right? And that is where, you know, you go through the whole array, you convert it to a linked list, you go through and see if you have CDs or ABs, you delete those in uh, constant time since you're using a linked list or linear time if you're not using a linked list. And then you go through again and you go through again and you just keep going through until you reach a situation where you can no longer make any deletions, right? And that's also a point to this being minimum seems kind of weird, right? Because I don't, it doesn't really make sense that there'd be a different order, right? Either you delete things or you don't delete things. You know, if you delete things, it can only make new things to delete. So there is no optimal order of doing things, right? You delete things if you can delete them. You don't delete them if you can't delete them because only deleting things will reveal more things that could be deleted possibly in the future, right? Only by deleting CD will I possibly get the AB. So there is no minimum possible length. There's only the resulting length if you just continue this process. <sighs> if none of that makes sense, just know that there's an N cubed solution, brute force, which is pretty intuitive. There's N squared if you convert it to a linked list and neither of those solutions are the actual optimal and the optimal solution is a very common pattern of problems that people solve. Rambling, rambling, rambling. Let's go back to uh, an example. So for this example, we have um, example. We have, uh, da, 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 da. what do we have? So we have S equals A, B, F, C, A, C, D, B. Now, the kind of n squared example we can walk through here, right? So we scan through this system and we say, oh, look at this. There's an AB that can be deleted. All right? So we, we kind of mark that either if it's a linked list, we just instantly delete, it, delete them from the linked list. And we keep walking through, we keep walking through, and we see this CD and we say, okay, this CD can be deleted. So now that's going to result in a new linked list, a new representation. So now it's F, C, A, A. B. So then we walk through again. So we walk through again. We say F, C. Nope, that's not C, D, or A, B. We see C, A. That's not C, A, or C, or ugh, A, B, or C, D. We see A, A. That's Alcoholics Anonymous. No, that's not A, B, or C, D. And then we see A, B. And we say, ah, alas, there's something we didn't see before, but now exists because we deleted things. So there's an A, B. We delete that. Now that could potentially, right, create a new situation. So now we have to walk through again. We see FC, there isn't one. CA, there isn't one. Um, and then we cry because I made some stupid mistake here. So AB, FCA, CDB. So AB goes away. CD goes away. Oh, for some reason I copied this A over twice because I'm foolish, right? So... Always be careful about what you're doing and look at the answer to ensure you're doing it right. So this is F, C, A, B. And then we delete this A and B and it becomes just F, C, which has this length of two. Okay, apologize about that. And we look at this other example and there's nothing we can do, right? We'd walk through once and say A, C, no, C, B, no, B, B, no, B, D, no, nothing we can do. Right, and that would be an n cubed solution unless you could delete these things in constant time by using something like a linked list. 
But how are we going to do this even faster, right? Which is kind of an, an annoying process because given this constraint, we could do n cubed, we could do n squared, and we call it a day, and we just, you know, we go on our merry way and say, look, we solved this problem and meet the constraints, we're done. But just for the sake of this problem, let's think about, well, how would you do this in a much faster way, okay? And it's hard for me to explain, to be honest, how to do it because I'm so ingrained in my mind this type of problem because I've done so many similar problems, okay? So I'm going to try my best to think about it in terms of, something that's brand new that I've never seen before. How did somebody at some point, some immortal man, woman, child, they, them, he, zees, or whatever, that person discovered, right, this this idea, this approach, this data structure, this algorithm, whatever, and, you know, what did it probably happen that led them to that? So let's talk about that here. And then after, I'll just, you know, quickly mention, look, this is something very common. You should probably know this, right? This is a standard program pattern that you're going to encounter. And it's, you know, there's a high likelihood that it's going to be a problem that you see in some interview at some point. So, you know, memorize it and you'll see it over and over again and it's easy to recognize. But let's just think about it like so. So the weird thing is, so something, something that isn't going to be deleted now could be deleted later. Okay. That's kind of the observation you need in this problem, right? When this A, although it's not deleted now, right, the first pass, it could be deleted later. So we don't want to just disregard and say, oh, it can never be deleted because it can't be deleted right now, but it could be deleted at some point in the future, okay? So what I'm trying to get at here, right, is if we look at this and we just play around with it a little bit again, and we say, well, you know, this A alone, well, let's think about the first thing alone. I can't delete this A, it's just this A alone. And then the next thing that gets added is a B, right? And I say, oh, an A and a B. So I can delete those things. So I clear this out. Then the next thing I'm gonna add to my log is F. I say, okay, I'll add an F, right? Maybe even though F doesn't get deleted, maybe in the future F will do something that will result in some things getting deleted. I don't know. And then I have to add C, right? Because I can't, delete C from F, then I have to add A. And I, ha I can't delete C and A, and then I have to add C. And I can't delete these, right? Because, well, because why? Well, because A and C, they don't delete, right? Only A, B, and C, and D delete. And then finally, I get to a problem where I have C and D and I say, oh, alas, look at this. I can delete these two things. So then I have just F, C, and A. And I have F, C, A, and B. And I say, oh, hey, look at this. Since I deleted C and D, now the first thing at the top is A, or at the bottom, depending on how you look at this, is A, B. And I delete those things. Right? And then if you look at the end result here, well, look at that. That's the resulting string. I see. And I did that in linear time, depending on how I represent this structure down here. Right? Because what I'm really doing kind of intuitively is like, well, I'm keeping track of the things that I've added, right? If I add something, I'm saying, oh, this is going to be a part of my destination string. But if I find its match on the other side, then I can delete it, right? I'm adding A because I can't delete it because there's nothing to delete it with. Then when I add a B, well, the A and the B cancel each other out. So now that doesn't have to be my destination string. So I say, okay, forget it. Now I have to add a F, I have to add a C, I have to add an A, I have to add a C, and then I add a D and I say, oh, look, this D will cancel out this C so I can forget them, boop, remove it. And then I add a B and I say, oh, look, this B actually cancels out an A. I don't think about the fact that, well, actually this B comes after this A, way after it, but in between them are things that get deleted. So this B deletes this A and then you have the resulting string. So what it's really meaning, right, is like if you add things together, you know, more generally, if I have an A and then I add all these things, right, well, if these things end up canceling out, that would be reflected in the way that we're doing this. So then these things will cancel out. And that would be the same thing for any CD or AB before that. Right, then it would be this system that cancels out and these CDs will cancel out. So you're basically building your string 
as you go and you say, okay, if I encounter an A and B together, I can remove them and continue building. And since I'm removing them, right, at some point, if when I add this C, if all these things get removed, then on this, this stack, the next thing will be C and D and they will delete each other and they will get removed as well. Hand wavy, okay? But what this problem really is, right, fundamentally, is we have A's and B's cancel each other out and C's and D's cancel each other out, right? That's an equivalent problem to something that you might have seen where you, hey, these braces cancel each other out and these braces cancel each other out. This is the same exact problem, right? Right, where we have a problem, we say, okay, these things cancel each other out and these things cancel each other out, except we have other characters that can be within, right? But A's and B's cancel each other out, so it's like A's the opening brace and B's the closing brace and C's the opening square bracket and D's the closing square bracket, right? It's the same exact problem, just labeled a different way. So when I looked at this problem, I thought through it, I was like, this is literally the same exact problem and that problem is solved using the same exact approach. So what is this approach? What data structure do we use here in order to add things and remove things quickly? Well, that's a stack, right? This is a stack growing downwards, right? But we have a stack, we add A, we find a B, so we pop A off the stack. We add F, we add C to the stack, we add A to the stack, we add C to the stack, we add D, we say, okay, the last thing on the stack is C, we're adding D, pop C and D off the stack. We add B, the last thing on the stack is A, we pop A and B off the stack, and then we have FC at the length of the end, is that just is the solution, okay? So this is the same exact problem, which is why it should be pretty clear and intuitive. The solution's kind of hand wavy, but it kind of, you know, it definitely makes sense. But it's definitely something where you just see the pattern and you apply it over and over and over again, and eventually it just becomes second nature. And when you see the problem, you know exactly what to do. And that thing that is what you do is you just create a stack, you make it empty, and then you look at each character in S. You say, well, if the character equals B, and the last character in the stack, so the last character equals A, what does that mean? Well, we'll do it this way. If the last character in the stack equals A and we're adding a B, then these things cancel out. So that's the same thing as saying, okay, just pop the last thing from the stack. All right. Else if the last thing in the stack is negative one, I mean, if the last thing in the stack at negative one, the last thing says equals C, and the character we're looking at equals, I need to standardize how I'm doing these things here. So let's make this like that. Then we'll pop the C from the stack, right? So what I'm basically saying is I have C on the stack and I encountered a D, well then I'm removing C and D from the stack. So instead of just adding D, then removing C and D, just add C, have C in the stack. If I see a D, then I just remove C and don't add D, this is an equivalent thing, right? If I add C and D, then remove C and D, that's the same thing as just adding C and then just removing C and never touching D. It's an equivalent statement, right? Either I move two or move one, but the same, but identically, they're both just removing C and D from the stack, right? C and D do not exist in the stack, yeah. or A and B for that matter. Otherwise, if they're not, if these aren't the case, right? If I can't remove A and B or can't remove C and D, then I'm just going to add the character to the stack. And at the end, well, our string, our, our system is just the length of the stack, okay? Now, the problem here, right, is I'm comparing something to the last element. And in the beginning, there is no initial element, right? So, you know, this is one of those things where the, not an edge case, but it's like the way I'm, form, the way I'm formulating this, I need to be a little bit more descriptive or add some conditions or maybe, you know, in, initiate this with the first value or something to ensure that I don't, you know, access an empty stack, right? So the little coding trick you can do, right? You can either instantiate this with the first element, but what if there's no elements? Well, there's always one. So you can do that and then like that. But I kind of like this more. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give it a dummy value for the first value and then just remove the stack minus one, right? Because that first value will never go away and that first value will never activate any of these things. So whatever the length of the stack minus one is at the end, that's your answer. All right. And it's wrong. I don't know, maybe. Okay, so what is the run and space time complexity? So let's say N is the length of S. And then for time, 
Well, we have to look at each character in S, right? So we have to look at all N characters. This is a constant operation. Popping something from the end of the stack is a constant operation. This is why we did it this way. Constant operation, making just a verification. We look at the last thing. It's constant to check this. It's constant to make these comparisons. It's constant to pop from the stack. It's constant to add to the end of the stack, right? So that's the beauty thing, thing about the stack, right? It's constant time to pop from the stack and it's constant time to append to the stack. So these are, well, all that to say is everything within this for loop is constant. So for n characters in S, we do constant things. We do n constant things. So that's big O of n time. Find the length, that's just constant. So constant n time O of n time. Okay. For space, well, we have to create this stack, right? And then we need to start appending to the stack. Right, so we're gonna have to, in the worst case, we could have something like this, right? If we had S equals A forever, right? or whatever this length is. Well, then our stack's gonna end up being A, and then we have to add, how am I gonna do this? So it had an A, then another A, then another A. I'm gonna just keep adding A's, because I'm never gonna delete anything, so I have to keep adding. So in the worst case, there are situations, right, where there are situations where, what? where you end up you know, creating a stack, which is literally just all the elements of S. So that's to say, you could have all N elements of S within your stack, so you need N space to accommodate all those N elements. So that is in the worst case, O of N space. Right. And uh, yeah, that's it. So I hope everybody uh, learned a little bit from this problem. It's been a while since I made a video, you know, like more than a week, so I'm definitely a little bit rusty, but uh, appreciate you watching. and. Uh, Dami, mean, like, like, give me a like if you liked it. Give me a subscription if it's worth your time. I don't ever do it when people tell me to do it, so I don't expect you to do it either, but it would be cool if you did. All right, peace out.